So, uh, welcome. I am Vidal Achak from the IoT Foundation, and today I will present you the work that we have done with Luigi Vignetti and Vasil Dimitrov about implementation study of verifiable, verifiable delay functions. So, one big question about blockchain research is how can we prove that time has been spent? And this is a big question that has many applications in consensus rate control and distributed random generator, but not only um, blockchain, like it is also a question about security and like anti-spamming. So one of the most used current solutions is what we call a proof of work that anyone should be aware of. So the quick idea is that using a publicly known hashing function uh, across the network, we have to find an input M such as the hash of this input is lower than a certain threshold, uh, which determines the challenge. Time if we, if we look for them randomly, because there is no other way than just doing it randomly. Uh, so the problem is, is that it is very fast to verify it's only one hash. So like typically maybe one microsecond uh, and it's lightweight to implement and to, it doesn't have a big um, overhead on the network. It's just like a few hundred bits, but it has a huge parallelization potential. And because like if you get 1,000 machines, then you can have 1,000 more hashing power than like just one machine. So this is the a major uh, challenge in blockchain area, like especially for Bitcoin, for example, how to overcome uh, this race to mining that we can see. So very recently, like two years ago, there has been a, an alternative that uh, rose, which is called verifiable delay function. And what is exactly a verifiable delay function? It is a, a set of three algorithms. One is the setup, uh, which is uh, a step that we process at the very beginning of the, of the network. And we initialize uh, the environment. It is very general. For example, it can be a RSA group, or like um, uh, elliptic curves, it, it is very general. Then there is the evaluation. One, when one of the participants of the network needs to evaluate a VDF, it takes a certain input from a very general input space, uh, which is determined by the network uh, and the protocol's characteristics and a challenge to and it returns a solution Y and eventually what we call a proof pi, uh, yeah, pi, which is used to speed up the verification. And finally, we have the verification, which is performed by anyone in the network that wishes to actually check uh, that the pair Y pi that the evaluator uh, sent on the network is actually a solution on the input X two. So, some insight about what is a VDF. So the evaluation must run into sequential steps, which means that it is not parallelizable. This is the main difference with proof of work. It is that if you have 100 Parallelize inside of the pro and here uh, we recur. Vidal, I don't know if you can hear me, but you seem to have a bad connection. Uh, we, we can't hear you very well. Uh, Maybe if you can uh, turn down your camera, that that could help your transmission maybe, or 
Okay, I know nothing about this, but maybe it could help. Okay, so we'll just wait like a few seconds to see if Vidal uh, connects again. And um, if he does not, then we'd move to, uh, to the second presentation. But uh, I suggest that we still wait for, I don't know, one minute maybe. So v Vidal, are you back? I see you back among the participants. So maybe you can keep your camera off. Just turn on your mic and, and share your slides. You can hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. You, yeah I saw that I was muted, but I, I don't understand what happened. Well, you were you were disconnected. Well, we just lost the connection. It seems that you have a pretty bad connection. Yeah, it, it was very bad today. I don't know why. Uh, I'm pretty disturbed. Um, I, I will try to to keep going with that, but I honestly I honestly don't know why it is so bad. This. Uh, yeah. Okay, so the. And so the, evaluate, the evaluation of uh, the RSA based. Share your uh, again. Yeah, sorry. The evaluation for RSA based um, VDF it is for taking an input S and uh, a challenge to, to compute Y equal to X for a Q per to, uh, which is actually squaring two times uh, X and like getting back the, the value. You don't uh, see the slides, in fact. You don't see the slides? No. Oh. It's not going well. Ah, now you, we see them. Yeah, I don't know why it was disconnected, actually. Um, OK, sorry. I'm very sorry. So the evaluation consists in squaring two time uh, a number in the RSA group. And this is the underlying assumption of RSA based mm, VDF it is that this operation can only be done sequentially and it doesn't have any way of uh, parallelizing it. And actually, if someone were to know the private key of this RSA, which is like the, uh, the, the factorization of N, then he can compute it in a constant time, like very, very fast. Uh, because of um, of uh, modular properties of uh, of RSK groups. Okay, so here is the difference between the, the two VDFs. In the Pietschak uh, VDF, we split the exponentiation that we just computed in log to small pieces using a Pietschami heuristic for the security, and then it is reconstructed during the verification. And in the Wesel of Ski one, we compute the, uh, a proof, which is a 
third exponentiation of in which we take the exponent and we divide it by L with L is a, is a small prime of typically like 200 bits. And then, and this prime is also uh, selected using a fiat chamber heuristic. And then the verification is done by computing, by reconstructing Y uh, by, um, by, compu by computing the power of pi for L uh, times the remaining of um, uh, two power of two over L. And so the major difference between both in like a high level is that the proof is composed of log two elements for the pH track and a single one element for the RSA group. And that can be a huge, um, a huge uh, difference in, uh, uh, in networks because one element can be about 2,000 or 4,000 bits. So log two, uh, and we'll see the value of two. So what is the contribution of our paper? So far, we have a formal fr framework proposed by Dan Bonnet uh, for a VDF to work on that. And we have two majors proposals by Pietrzak and Wojcikowski. Uh, how, and we also have a theoretical survey by Dan Bonnet and his PhD students in which he gives some insights about why it is good, uh, why are the two major proposals good VDF in theory. But we have absolutely no idea uh, like no values of how VDF can be used in industry, um, in industrial um, environment, and especially for critical timing. For example, at the IOTA Foundation, we want to use VDF as a rate control mechanism uh, because uh, proof of work can be very easily spammed. And so verification must be performed very, very quickly and we had no idea how it was. And there is no implementation values. Will it be academia or industry? So what we do is that we give experimental results of VDF and we suggest some improvements uh, by using state-of-the-art algorithms. And we make a viability comparison between proof of work and uh, VDF. So what our experimental setup is, we run the simulations on a Intel Core i7 of eighth generation. Uh, so like three years old, and we have done it using GMP library in C++ for multi-precision uh, computation. So that you can have like uh, an idea of how powerful the, the implementation was. Uh, and to say also that we didn't implement using uh, assembly. So concerning the evaluation in this plot and the XLC, we have a value of two ranging for two power 20 to two power 25. And uh, here is the computation time. Unfortunately, the, the time is not in seconds, it is in milliseconds. Um, but what is interesting is the, the trend. We actually find a linear and pretty predictable evaluation time as the theory uh, was predicting. And something interesting are the different lines. In red, we took the RSA modulus size of 500, uh, 1000 and 2000 for blue. And so we see that the modulus size has a clear impact on the performances, which is near and thus should be taken into account when building, when using VDF for uh, industrial purposes. Concerning the verification, we have a very nice verification, um, a very nice um, property. It is that the verification is constant time uh, for the Wegolowski one. And here I have an issue, but the Wegolowski is the dotted uh, line, whereas the Pietrak is the solid line. Uh, and we can see that it can be performed under one millisecond. So this means that the VDF should not be a bottleneck uh, for like um, transaction verification. And the constant time of the verification is something very important because it means that you can increase or decrease the difficulty in the network without uh, having to worry about the impact on like your bottleneck of transactions. 
And here we have uh, a plot in which we plotted the verification time for the Wesolowski VDF uh, with a varying size of the L that we talked about before, which is the prime number by which you divide the, uh, the, the, the challenge when uh, you build the proof. And it is also in, important to take into account that this brings a trade-off between security and performance because like just doubling the size of the of this uh, L number just doubles the uh, time it takes to compute the verification. Uh, and so to stick to the Wesolowski one because it is the one we went for due to the shortness of the proof and uh, the better performances that we found. Uh, we found out that the main part of the computation of the verification was spent on rebuilding Y by making a double exponentiation. And this spans between 30% to 90% of the verification part. So it is a very critical part of uh, the verification to optimize for critical um, purposes where you have to uh, verify a lot of uh, VDF in the main, in the main, uh, in the same time. So one solution is to use what we call multi-exponentiation algorithm. A multi-exponentiation algorithm consists in computing uh, a product of exponentiation modular one same modulus faster than just the separate exponentiation and, and then taking the product of them. And in our paper, we have studied the Dimitrov's algorithm, but it is a bit outdated. And so the work that we are doing now is that we are studying also the simultaneous 2WA method, which consists in taking a uh, window of side W of uh, the exponent and uh, using a kind of a square multiply method. Then there is the yet Yen Lai and Lenstra simultaneous sliding window algorithm, which is an a optimization in which you have a sliding window instead of um, a predetermined window. There is a binary GCD based uh, multi exponentiation algorithm that is actually tolerant to what we call side attack channels. And various modern solutions that we are investigating, which use parallelization, it is very recent, like two or five years recent. And so in the paper, we only talk about Dimitrov algorithm, but as I said, it is a bit outdated. So one big issue when it comes to VDF you for, uh, used for blockchain is how can we generate the setup in, the, in a decentralized way? Because as we said, if someone knows the private key of, for example, the RSA group, then he can cheat and um, compute uh, VDF instantly. And this is a major problem in VDF now. And it has been the subject of four papers published in the Stanford blockchain comparison this year. And one of the main paper is by Lee Jero team uh, who generated a, who created a uh, fully decentralized um, way to generate a safe modulus, RSA modulus. And because it is absolutely not a, a trivial problem. And finally, we have a discussion about VDF uh, viability. For example, here we have a plot on the x-axis. We have the price in U U United States dollar that one can invest into like spamming the network with uh, uh, evaluating VDF and proof of work. And on the y-axis, we have the speed up in throughput, which means the amount of uh, VDF and proof of work that he can validate uh, in a unit of time. Uh, the, the dot are the proof of work evaluations and square are VDF. And so we have different colors for different kinds of hardware. So what we can see is that globally, when you uh, 
uh, change hardware, you get a slower, like a lower uh, speed up when you use VDF than you will get for a from for work, which is good because it means that investing in a very powerful hardware doesn't yield you that much more power, uh, mainly because of the non-parallelizable part of VDF, as I explained, that you can make a lot of in, inner parallelization in the FPGA or axis. But what is more interesting is about the plane and uh, NT uh, dots that we have. The plane means the person only have one machine and the NT is that the attacker has one thousand machine. And if the, uh, and what we can see is that multiplying the amount of machine just gives you absolutely no incentive to uh, no more power in the network. And then you have no incentive to make a race for, uh, for, um, for hashing power or VDF power. What is important to, to, to understand in this is that here we only consider uh, having to run iteratively VDF. Uh, I mean, you cannot start a VDF before you finished the previous one because you use the output of one VDF as the input of the next. Uh, because of course, if you invest uh, one third in one third machine, then you can run one third VDF for different inputs. So it is up to the network and the protocol to um, to manage this and propose a iteratively sequential VDF computation. And in a paper that we published at Globcom conference this year, we proposed a uh, rate control uh, for like spamming prevention algorithm that we envision to use in the IOTA for which uh, explicitly use this uh, property of VDF. And a final word about research collaboration. If you want more information about VDF, there is um, an an association which is called the VDF Alliance. It is a consortium of industrial and research partners such as Supranational, um, Supranational Ethereum, Tegos, and more and more uh, academical laboratories. And they have a website which is vdfresearch.org, um, and it is a useful uh, uh, way to find information about VDF. So this is the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to, to ask them.